Chen is uh, it's going to be an interactive session. Um, so, but it, it just um, basically just going to talk about uh, visualizing data. So um, I understand that this is the sixth meetup. So every time I come here, I've been here like third, uh, three or four times. Every time I come here, I learn something new. Uh, but they just thought of uh, one of the organizers, Niresh, uh, which is a good friend of mine. Um, they just figured out that they want to switch something up, so they want to they, they want to get. Uh, different different set of stories, especially from software developers. Um, so, like I said, I am not a data scientist. I'm a software I'm a software engineer, and but I work with uh, data scientists, mathematicians, and, and clients as well. So, uh, I would like to introduce a bit uh, about myself. So, um, well, I used to work in a company called uh, Space Time Research. Well, now it's called Big Arc Australia. Basically, they acquired by a Japanese company. Uh, right, right after I left. Um, so over there, we basically, we basically built um, BI tools for uh, businesses and governments. So uh, that was based in Melbourne. Uh, now I'm project lead, basically uh, a software agency based in White Room. So uh, the company name is called White Room, based in Penang, just right here across the street. So I handle a lot of projects, uh, basically building software apps, whatever. I would say um, I probably spend my entire career doing dashboards for users. So, um, uh, based on my experience, I, I, I really want to make, make everything clear is that um, everything about today is based on my personal experience. So obviously it's very open up to uh, Q&A later, uh, so it doesn't mean that what I'm saying is correct. So I, I, I also encourage people who just point out and want to be like the more interactive sessions. Right? So basically there are two types of um, data visualization projects when you talk about it. So type one, I would say that it's very similar to what my company, what my first company did. So we built a, a DIY tool. So when you talk about DIY tool, it's pretty much like when you go to the web, go to the, 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 the software or app. So you just upload your CSV files, upload your tables over there, and then just and then uh, under the hood, there are a lot of uh, powerful things happening. Um, for example, they clean up the data, they'll, they'll, they'll cross tab tabulation for you, um, and then it all just to make sure that you get to use the data. For example, um, you just put in your data, uh, you can drag, for example, you, uh, you can drag gender into a row, and then they'll just display a, a cool charts for you. I'll, I'll show a few examples later. Um, and then a the second tab, which is uh, very customized, um, I would say, so uh, my previous company, uh, did that as well, and my current company do that uh, very often as well. So basically, is hey, some people, sometimes people approach us to say, well, we want to build a, a report, an annual report for um, for this year results or whatever. So we look at the data, uh, we we clean up the data, we populate it into in cool looking charts so that they can present it in a more meaningful way, right? So I'll talk about data visualization uh, much later as well. So. Um, I'll spend a little bit more time talking about my previous company. I spent like five years over there. Um, I no longer work for them, so I don't want to talk too much anyway. Um, but basically, uh, it's very similar to Tableau and, and Click. If you are a data scientist, uh, these are the two softwares that uh, you probably use uh, use a lot in your in your daily life. Uh, the only the only reason, the only difference that I would say is uh, compared to us, obviously. Um, we are focusing on more governments, uh, larger corporations, so we are not that well known. Um, and Tableau is also a, a uh, I would say, general users can use it. Uh, smaller companies can use this as well. So you can actually log into Tableau and click and then play around with open data sets, right? Uh, speaking of open data sets, which means that you can actually go to Malaysian websites, you can just download whatever data sets they have they provided. Malaysia, not so much. Uh, in Australia, it's very common. Um, so you can download the data sets and then you can use Tableau or click just to play around with, uh, to see what uh, interesting trends that you, that you want to find, find out, right? So obviously we have a lot of uh, customers, but these are just the customers that I personally have uh, interacted with or have worked with. So Australian uh, ABS, the first one, uh, basically just doing census data for them. So they use our major software, which is one of our major clients. Uh, DWP, which is a UK government, uh, we build customized dashboards for them. Uh, same goes to uh, Toys uh, Research Australia and CCB. Uh, CCB is a customer that I probably spend most of the time visiting their office like once a week um, just to build customized uh, dashboards for them. Right? Um, well, 
Well, basically, I want to talk about uh, 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 the relationship between software engineers and uh, data scientists and math agents as well. So, uh, math agents, uh, I think you're a famous guy. Um, I couldn't find a good picture of uh, a good developer, so I just put Mark Zuckerberg there as he's famous. Uh, the worst is data scientist. I don't know any famous data scientist, so that's a problem. So I just put in some random guy doing some magic uh, <laughs> over here. But uh, you, you, have, you, get, you just get a picture. Right? So um, I want to talk about how I dealt with um, different different people from different fields, right? Um, so if you remember the first type that you can see, that's just a type one. Is generally you want to build DIY tools. So we actually spend a lot of time uh, doing uh, working with animations. So what band managers role are basically they come to our office in either in consultant basis or full time basis. They look at our software, they look at our stats, um, current structure, they look at our algorithm, they want to clean things up. So, um, so they basically just say that hey, this thing is wrong, this thing is right. Uh, this this thing is, seems a bit weird. So help me out to, to do this. So I want to give some tips when we work with them. It won't be a lot, but um, I would probably just say as a software engineer, uh, you might feel intimidated by. Uh, Man editions, oh, you're up here and I'm down here, right? Um, but it's just different domains. Right? One thing that you guys really want to know, I don't know if there's any man editions over there. Um, we can talk about it, whatever, right? So, but basically, it's just different domains. So, I would say, as a software engineer, if you work, if you work with man editions, uh, at the end of the day, you want to make your product better. You want to make the product um, to have less bugs, right? So, um, just ask. It's, it's okay to ask. It's okay to not, if you don't understand uh, values uh, or standard deviations, which is like the most common things. Obviously, my company we have to understand it, but some formulas that I've never seen before. But we have to program it into uh, software. So um, it's okay to ask. Um, so and then obviously a lot of googling, a lot of self learning as well. Um, and then second tip is you actually write a lot of tests. So because you can never, especially when we deal with census data, when we deal with uh, um, I would say health data, very sensitive data. So you, you, you don't want them to be inaccurate because they will be used by uh, larger companies that make uh, big decisions, right? So that, that could determine their funding for the next uh, five years or ten years. So you don't want to have um, incorrect data. So I would say, um, so one, one, one thing that we can do is write a lot of tests to, to just test out the, their, um, the results that we So, um, so that, 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 that is how I deal with uh, man management. So I basically say, hey, um, why don't you tell me um, what are the results if I put in this data and stuff like that. So, Basically, they will do all our work, and we just have to uh, ask them to do so. And then, of obviously, their job roles are making sure that everything is correct, um, everything is, is uh, efficient, and stuff like that. So, um, and then our job is just to program whatever they have in their brain and put that in uh, a software. Um, so that's it for my. I I don't really work with management that that much. Probably like five percent of my um, time, I guess, uh, working with managers. So the next one I really want to say is. How do you? How do I deal with um, data science? So, data science is a very broad subject. Uh, it's a very I, I, until now I couldn't really define it. So, if you guys really want to know what is data science, or you're leading into data science, you can obviously talk to uh, some of the organizers here, uh, Kent, or you can just Google what is data science. Um, so, they have something called um, data science band diagrams. Uh, maybe I can share share to you. They explain what data scientists do and can do about. I would say when I, when we deal with data scientists, the main thing is you want to know. Well, um, you really want to understand the goal. Um, what 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 are we doing here? So I'll, I'll describe a bit over here. So um, let's just say that when we work with data scientists, right? They are like, like I said, they are basic two goals. The first type of project is to build a software. So when you talk about building a software, which is software developers will do all the do all the work. Um, data scientists are just here to help you. You'd be like, hey, I want to, I want to, um, let's just put it, let's just try these graphs. Uh, let's see, let's see if that works. So I would say they work directly underneath you. Um, so that, that just happened. Like I say, different domain, there's no, there's no better or worse. It's just different domains, right? Um, so really important thing when you work with data scientists, when you talk about uh, building a software is, um, what do I need to do to make more sense? So let's just say if you have, so for example, data visualization tool, which means that you, grab, you put the data, and then you get tons of uh, charts, graphs. So basically, say, hey, how can I make my product look cooler? So they'll, they'll give you advice, and you just work with them, and then and then see can you program actually program it into a, into a, um, 
a, a software or web app or mobile app, right? So that's one side of thing, and then that's another side, which is like I said, a project type two, where you um, try to build a report, try to build an, um, try to build a, a dashboard for 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 a specific business domain to, to, to see. So in that case, data scientists will take the wheels, so you cannot do anything. So they basically say that, hey, um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk a bit about my personal experience. So the data science team will be this like, I want to show this result. Show it, like, okay, how do you want to do so? So, um, so that is my job to figure out how do I, um, how do I make it more clear, right? So, um, so like I said, uh, you are there to help data scientists to like, you know, they are awesome. Uh, and because at the end of the day, when, whenever the result that they got uh, is basically um, Excel files, so a CSV files that, that, that don't make sense to normal business people, right? I'm just there typing about the thing, but I hope you guys get the, get the idea. Um, so we are here to make the result pop, right? and, and that's it. But that, that's, that is what um, data visualization is about. Uh, it's about uh, sending a message that is very easy to understand to normal people and stuff. Right, so um, I would say, uh, ask what is the most important thing in your result. So we just talk, talk to them. Maybe they, they write a few use case. That's uh, basically like what, what I mentioned over here. What is the most important thing you want to say? Okay, I want to say there, there's something to be like. Hey, I want to show um, that there's a recent spike in um, car accidents in this area. So figure out something else to show. So they, they tell you the, the, the story, and then we try to figure out how to use visuals to uh, represent the story, right? Um, so I'll talk about uh, data visualization, which is uh, why we are here. Um, so simply put, it's just uh, it's a way for you to uh, transform information, uh, basically numbers, data, uh, into a graphical form. Um, when, you define, when you define a um, so basically, visual form means charts, right? Ninety percent of data visualization means charts, graphs, maps. So, um, so let's just see how can we what can we learn more about it. Mouse um, So okay. So why why do we need data visualization? I know a lot of people already know that, but I'm just trying to make things uh, a bit smoother uh, for people that are that are new. So. Um, Basically, we are visual creatures, right? We, we, we are attracted by colors, we are attracted by shapes. So, um, look at movies, look at so look at movies, look at everything, look at bands, look at everything. So, if you use both tags, means it's important, something like that. Um, so, data visualizations, well, data visualizations do that. So, they usually tell you the story. So, um, uh, any information you want to tell you. So, you use data visualizations to to tell a story compared to using numbers, tons of Excel files. Um, another reason why, which is quite recent thing, big, big data has been taken over the world. So if you have, just, just imagine that how can you uh, find important information every day with the trillions of rows or terabytes of data. So um, big, big data cannot live without uh, data visualization, simple, simple put right? So, yeah. Um, so when you talk about data visualization, there are Two core principles that I think um, that are the most important thing. So the, the accuracy of the data. So you want when you visualize the data, you want it to you want to prioritize data accuracy. Um, obviously, the integrity and clarity of it over the the red representation form. I've seen some of the craziest graphs that don't mean anything, right? They just be like that is cool. Um, so but they don't mean anything. So um, so that's one thing. So for for example, a simple bar chart could be could be too simple, could be too boring. But at the same time, it also could be uh, very powerful when you just try to realize the, the trends or outliers um, for that particular story, right? Um, so accuracy is one important thing, and I also really like terms where people say um, numbers don't lie, uh, but liars use numbers. So um, this is what I usually tell my. Uh, data scientist, hey, are you sure this is correct? Like, yeah, it's correct. I'll just put it in. But um, this is just some philosophy that I try to uh, learn. Right? Um, another thing is helpful. So when you, when you visualize the data, you want it to be as helpful as possible. You want people to know it instantly. Um, and then if they really want to know more, they can navigate to it. They can navigate it, uh, data with context and, 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 and uh, performances as well. 
right? So um, you don't want to just display like that. I mean, generally, you don't want to display very simple, simple stuff. And if they want to know more, they cannot, they cannot, they cannot do anything. So yeah, you don't want to take into another roles that they are not familiar with. So I would say you want it to be as helpful as, as possible. So um, I speak about I speak a lot about uh, how to tell the story when you talk about uh, the, the data visualizations. Um, I would say that most of the times I'm just choosing the right uh, visuals to represent. So uh, I'll talk about some of some types of charts um, that we can use uh, uh, in, in common. All right? Um, so there are like nine, ten, eleven types of charts. So I actually um, found this out like last year. But way before when I started working, we didn't have this kind of uh, guidelines. So I really recommend people uh, follow the guidelines. It's actually on a material, material IO uh, provided by Google. So they start all about the guidelines that as a software engineer, as a data scientist, should follow when you try to display a, a certain piece of information. So I would say the first thing is uh, change over time. So change over time means that, well, it's a, it's, it's a series of data over a period of time, uh, such as trends, comparisons, uh, across multiple categories. So um, the most common usage would be stock price performance, but basically just anything that um, relates to time. So you want to show uh, the trends uh, for from from 1991 to uh, 2019. So um, some of the some of the most simple ones would be you know like charts, bar charts, bar charts, um, candlestick, which is very common in uh, market movement um, area. Well, you, uh, you name them, right? And then another time, like, again, like, the, 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 the end goal of this is just trying to figure out what kind of data we want to represent, what kind of story we want to tell. So well, we use different types of charts to, um, to represent them. So another one is when you try to uh, compare categories. Um, so when you want to have different categories, for example, uh, who, well, what are the examples of the income across different countries? So here are some of the, some of the cool charts that you can use. Uh, bubble charts, um, I'm just going to speak some of the un, uh, a little bit not that common things that we use. Uh, bubble charts are really good when you want to show uh, relationships between um, something that is huge and something that's small. So you use bubble charts. Um, if you use bubble charts, you can see that it's not that, um, it's not that um, I would say, pop um, to, to, to use this one. And then uh, moving on, um, when you talk about if you want to do ranking, uh, if you want to, if you want to convey information of uh, how, how do you do ranking. So um, basically as a software engineers, we just rank them and then we display them. So uh, sim simple as that, right? Uh, bar chart, column chart. One thing that I've, maybe I can ask us ask about all this, like what do you think about bar chart and uh, uh, column charts? Do you know the difference between bar and column? There's no difference in bar and columns. Uh, it's basically just a different way of uh, represent, uh, representing data. Well, uh, we use that quite, we don't want, when, when we, I'm um, asking you about, when my project manager is like, hey, it's too boring, I think I just, let us do a uh, column now. Uh, this bar, column, bar, and it's, oh, that's cool. Um, it was something like that. Um, another one is when you want to, um, how partial elements actually add up in total. So we all learned that when we were in, I don't know, primary school, pie charts are uh, our, our, our favorite charts, I would say. Um, and then business people, I don't know why business people really love donut. Uh, donut charts. Um, I personally don't like it. Uh, it's really hard for me to convey uh, to, to, to look at the quick information that I can get. Um, but you know, uh, it's similar to pie charts, um, tree maps, uh, which are uh, very common when you talk about when you want to when you want to display uh, different sizes. So in, in software engineers, we use that to to calculate the well, to use that to represent uh, file sizes. So uh, or or um, computational times so or sometimes sometimes. Uh, Sunburst, uh, which is very similar to uh, Donut, but just multiple layers. I'll just show you, um, since we have a lot of time today, so I'll just show you uh, some examples, uh, hands-on examples later. Right. Um, so another one, I know it's probably like, hey, why, why there are so many types? Yes, because there are different stories you want to tell. So uh, when you want to talk about um, two or more different variations, you want to talk about their relationships. Right. Scatter plot, uh, many magicians love this thing. Um, well, when I say when I say they love that because it's actually useful for them. They, they, they don't like they wouldn't be you know they just like something just because the, the looks like it's, it's really useful when you find a category when you want to catch some really uh, fast information that you can get. Right? 
um, like say bubbles or, or heat map, right? Um, so distribution is probably a very, uh, I would say, very familiar to uh, data data scientists on our stats side. Um, so they use one of my favorites is box plot, box plot um, or box and whisker. Basically, you get to know the high and the end and the median and, and, and stuff like that. So it always depends on the information you want to tell customers or tell users. Um, I personally never used binding before. I don't know what's that for. Um, density you can actually tell that uh, very similar to the stats uh, uh, browser that we've seen a lot of times. Um, probably uh, one of the few last is uh, when you want to talk about relationships, right? Um, how many, how multiple items relate to each other? Um, for example, you have uh, when you talk about social networks, so uh, so you use network charts. You see, for example, like Facebook friends, I'm friends with this guy, he's going to friend with that guy, so it's a really good representation. Uh, Venn diagram calls uh, a little bit less uh, less I would say common, but depends on usage again. Um, the, the reason why I talk about so many types of charts because if you don't know if you don't know the difference between charts, you don't know what to represent. So that's simple as that. So basically, just try to remember not not remember, try to learn as as um as, as much as you can as as a, well depends on your job, right? Your job doesn't require you this. Um, so uh, my job requires me to actually learn a lot of different charts. So that's basically what I do. I'll, I'll share some of my um, resources that you guys can look into later as well. Um, so basically, you use the correct charts. Um, when you have, when you know a lot of charts, then you can put them in your arsenal. So whenever people want to use it, they want to put that bot, you get your that help, right? Um, then uh, this is the last one. This is my favorite thing in the world, um, which is doing maps. So um, when you talk about representing, it, when you want to display data uh, uh, geographically, so that's the only way to use it. So um, uh, mapping, we call mapping. I probably spent like one year full time doing map only visualizations. Um, well, it's not. For example, if you want to show population by country, so just do that. So the colors, always you can use colors to uh, to make to make um, stuff more uh, appeal or make more sense actually. Um, so these are like kind of like heat map thing. So less people has a uh, wider color and then the the, the, the shape the shape is get so for more density. So for example, um, so you see that all, all the time, right? It tells you quick information uh, what you what you need to know. Um, I'll just okay. Uh, I'll just do a little bit of um, just some 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 thoughts that I have when I talk about bar and pie. So there's no right or wrong. There's no better charts or worse chart in the world. Obviously, you have your personal favorites and whatnot. But um, let's just say that you want to compare data between uh, quarter this quarter and last quarter a, a certain time. Um, I would say bar charts and uh, column charts they do the best uh, when you when you want to do that. Pie charts do so. Uh, you can actually see the proportions between alpha, beta, gamma, delta in a um, in, in in that category, but they don't do well. They don't do well uh, when you try to compare two bar charts. I have some customers uh, that insist to have two bar charts. I told them that it doesn't make sense, but you know, um, obviously it depends on uh, if they if they can. They can try to get information, obviously, why not, right? But we're just we're, we're just here to help at the end of the day. But I would I would uh, I would recommend to say that if you are comparing uh, categories over time, uh, pie charts are probably not the best uh, thing. So uh, another thing, well, is the stack and overlap. So when you talk about stack charts, which is on our left hand side, yeah. Um, so basically, it's an area chart, but they stack on top of each other. So with that, you can know the relationships, uh, how they stack um, to each other. Another one which is quite form, uh, popular these days are uh, uh, overlap charts. But I would say it's harder to read, uh, but you but, but spot the trends uh, very quickly. So I think I would say that give or take, depends on what story you want to tell. So uh, then, then choose the correct charts. Um, so I would like to give some of the uh, my personal experience that, that when we deal with uh, data visualization, right? So the first thing is you can try to do is to, to use shapes. So shapes tell, like I said, uh, humans are basically visual creatures. We, 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 when we see shapes, we see colors, we can tell green and blue, we can tell circle and, circle and uh, triangle or square, right? So uh, use shapes to, to, to tell more stories that are more easier to, for people to 
um, look at your to compare different data, right? Um, so and also you have to try to avoid weird stuff like this. Um, that is so nasty for work. Um, and truly, really, well, when you talk about when when you want to do bar charts, uh, just try to make it as simple as possible. Um, for example, because because that actually that actually stopping people to really read the data, so they cannot actually read the top values that that. Um, uh, that the graph represent. So um, another thing is color, which I actually learned the, uh, the hardware. You can always use colors, like I said, um, to, to to do categorizations and whatnot. So just look at this chart. Like, do you see any problems with the colors? Yeah. Well, I think I don't want to stereotype it, but basically, when you see blue, you talk about male, right? So how can you use the uh, pink colors to uh, to represent? Uh, male. So that will give, because when you talk about visualization, you want it to be quick. People see it, people get the message, people know the story. So this is actually quite misleading. Um, the project that I used to work with, um, I used the wrong color for different political parties. Um, obviously, it's, it's obviously in Melbourne, but let's just say that if I use blue color for Pakatan, they'll be like, hey, what's going on? So, um, and then you use red color for Tian. So, uh, something that you want to avoid. Um, I actually learned the hardware when I deploy it, but like, everybody, everybody was like, it's wrong. Like, what's, what's wrong? The data is wrong? Uh, what's wrong? No, the colors are wrong. So, you just have the hard coded colors. Um, here's some fun story, you know. Uh, and also, you can also make use of label analysis. I'm trying to see how can you uh, put in uh, different variations. If you just use normal bar charts, it could be uh, boring at times. So, um, sometimes you can like, just, just spice, spice, spice things up a little bit. So, remove the axis, show the labels, uh, give probably bad information when you have lesser. Uh, Categories, but if you have like you know twelve, then it's probably the bad idea. Um, next one, you can use icons, which is uh, very common nowadays when you talk about wearable device. Um, what's that called? iWatch um, or, or even iPhone. So uh, use that, and then usually you use icons to uh, represent a category, or something you can use it to use data. So right? you see the green color, um, that could mean something uh, for. Uh, depend, depending on the data you want to represent. Uh, but always use labels as well. I would, I would recommend to don't just use icons. Um, some icons are just very hard to understand. Um, yeah, so like I said, uh, display size is also very important. So uh, most, of our, most of my experience is based on uh, is, is building um, for web and for mobile. So I, I, I actually never work on a project that, that we need to use, that we need to display information on iWatch. Or variable device, bit bit or whatnot. So, um, so this this say this this, this this there are just some examples that I think that, that I found online. Right? So, if you only see this thing, it's very crazy to know um, what what's what what's the highest um, value that you want to know. So, uh, sometimes you put in labels. Uh, so, obviously, depending on your application, depending on um, what information you want to display, so you do that. Uh, the next one, which is not that common, when I talk about accessibility, um, I just want to uh, put this out there because I feel like it's something that we really need to catch on uh, as uh, Malaysian. Um, so when you talk, based on my experience when we build websites, based when we build dashboards, accessibility is very important. Um, accessibility means that when someone that is um, visually impaired, so they cannot really see properly, how can they actually make sense of the current data? So when you build a dashboard, but they cannot use it. That that is basically discrimination, right? Um, so and in a lot of countries, a lot of countries they actually like really stress that say accessibility is very important. You want people that are blind can use it, can see the graph like what? How can a blind people see this thing? Or some or some people that um, cannot really type, so they want to navigate the data with a single button. I've, I've seen. Um, in my own eyes, right? They just have a button. You just click next, 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 previous, next, previous. So you wanna, you wanna worry about um, the charts that or the visual that you wanna represent is available for them. Uh, so they usually call, use something called screen readers, but where they will just read out um, the data for them, but it's still useful. Um, so it's something that we need to worry about if your projects deal with um, you know users like that or their own graphics like that. Um, next one. So tip number two is using uh, different behaviors. I won't really talk too much, but I really want to show some examples later. Um, but basically, when you want to tell a story, you can give a lot of ways for them to interact with data. So uh, progressive disclosure, for example, 
Um, you just hover over it, um, you get to see the code data pops up or whatever. Um, Zoom, pagination, we have a lot of uh, different things. Might be good idea to just paginate them. Uh, so page two, page three, you see different data moving. Uh, it should be cool. Um, data controls, uh, for example, you want to filter out some of the data. Um, I'll share some of my um, favorite libraries now. So um, yeah, let's just do that. Um, let me just. If you have any questions, you can just like, go ahead uh, um, while, while I'm setting up this thing. Anybody has uh, experience in data visualization? I think most people do, right? But when we were young, uh, we do reports. Um, we always use Excel. Um, we, we always use Excel to basically look, make, make our data look cool. So, so knowing different charts. Yeah, so this is one of the things that I found out uh, quite recently as well. Um, so uh, it's called Data Viz Catalog. Uh, in my previous experience, I've never really used it, uh, but recently I've used it quite, quite a bit. Um, so over here, man, you can just like look, tap into some of the cool stuff and then they just explain to you, hey, what's going on? What's, what's up, up that range? Uh, what's, uh, you know, what, what they are for? So um, like I said, the, the, the more charts you know, the more uh, methods that you can do or when you try to uh, Visualize data. So, like, like we don't really understand a cut diagram, and just you know, um, it's, it's more, it's very like, uh, it's kind of like a dictionary. Like, you know, uh, you don't, you, you don't always have to memorize everything. Just knowing some way for you to uh, look information into. Right. Um, unfortunately, I cannot show you a lot of my uh, previous work because I just don't no longer have access to it. Um, one of the things that I have right now. Uh, that is available online, which is the compact that I used to work for. So I pretty much built this thing. Um, this is not like a great story for me anyway. Um, but the, the story is basically like um, our project manager is like, hey, we want to launch product. Uh, hey, Jim, just, just do me something cool uh, so that I can display um, to, to get funding. <laughs> so, 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 one of the, one of the, so, so, so the, our product is basically. Um, so we do something called the Open Data API. So you can just use our API to tablet data. Um, obviously, data visualization will be like fifty percent of it. So um, my job was pretty simple. Uh, just make make stuff look cool. So I use well, um, as you can see, the my least favorite charts. Uh, what's that called again? Um, what's that called? Is that? I can't remember the name. Uh, so uh, and then I just make it like you know, put some animations to it, uh, make it look a little bit uh, eye-catchy. Um, obviously some stats, uh, stat charts, um, you know, and then you can, use, you can do a lot of stuff like that. Uh, I'll show you how, how, how it is, uh, with the, this thing. Um, interactive maps, so um, a lot of people actually feel like when they, when they see maps, especially, especially uh, at least in my case, when you see maps, they feel like it's very hard to do, it's actually very easy to do. Um, if you have uh, good information provided. So maps, heat maps on real maps actually tell you uh, very good information um, about a certain area. So this talked about a uh, model vehicle tab. Uh, obviously I work with uh, a little bit of I work a little bit with data scientists as well just to say how can I display the information and stuff like that. Uh, this thing doesn't really tell you a lot of information, at least for the first glance of it, but I don't know why my project manager learned this so uh, they, they just put it in. Uh, but Anyway, as you can see, a lot of overlapping. I don't really like it. Um, so I'll show you some of the interactive tools that you can, that, like I mentioned, right? so you can zoom in, um, stuff like that. Uh, what else can you do? Oh, that's pretty standard. Um, okay. Yeah, this is not a good example, but just something that I can find uh, that I have. Um, so this is one of my favorite things. So you click, if you want to see more information, you can just, you know, um, it's, it's, it's storytelling, storytelling is, is the most important part. Yeah, so go back to um, my favorite libraries, right, so I just is probably my, um, 
the things that I spent a lot of time doing. So when I say libraries, it means that you, as a software engineer, you don't actually have to write code to generate charts. Maybe 10% of the time have to uh, figure out if some data scientists want to display some of some other things. Uh, but I would say um, a lot of time you can just use libraries. So when you talk about when I mean libraries, it means JavaScript packages that you can just use. Um, so for example, let's click on uh, view demo. Yeah, so there are tons of charts for you to choose from. Um, so let's just say you want to do a simple basic line. Um, right. So you can just like I know there are not there are not a lot of software engineers up here, but I'll just be really quick uh, just to explore how easy can it be. So for example, you want to change the labels, um, I'll just say GN um, change the data to 800 perhaps, uh, and then right, right. Then I get the correct thing. So this is this is you can see that. So this is actually uh, highly interactive. High chart is very highly interactive. Uh, is rendered in SVG. SVG, which is kind of like uh, very similar to XML, but it's it highly accessible. So when our projects have to deal with uh, demographics of visual impairs or somebody we try to use uh, high charts which is by default really support um, accessibility right so turn that in okay can't use so yeah so another another tips that I can give is you know sometimes just go through them and then um, yeah this thing was cool uh, ask data scientists if you want to show that be like yeah that's cool so uh, might as well so I'll just show another uh, so time series uh, very popular for um, so you can zoom in you can zoom in sorry you can zoom in uh, oh yeah. right. uh, so basically different charts where you can play around with so high charts is probably my favorite thing uh, in terms of in terms of charting library but it's actually very expensive uh, unless your company has a budget for it uh, then try to it's actually, I thought I see pricing. Uh, yeah, that's good. Well, there are different kind of packages. Uh, so let's say the most basic one. I think it's like 2,000 ringgit. Oh, that's expensive. Um, yeah, so it's quite expensive. So, but my company live and die with uh, high charts. So, um, whatever they say, just pay. Uh, obviously, we have different charts uh, with different libraries. Um, but sometimes when you think about money, right? So if it can if, if it can save you ten hours or two months, do you, you want to spend two thousand? You probably yes. Uh, obviously, that's always give and take. Um, cool. So another one is uh, ChartJS, completely free. Um, but is well, when something is free, generally they are bad. So, but it's very uh, it's very small. It's very lightweight. Uh, it's very suitable for. Uh, I would say uh, uh, general uses. So a lot of our projects internally right now at Rhino, uh, we use a lot of ChartJS charts as well. So um, let's take on some of the samples. Um, all the charts that we mentioned, yeah. So but you can just like you know play it around with. Uh, so you can actually program that into. So if you have a software developer like. They, like most developers have to use front end developers, so they can just like use this library, uh, program it. So it depends on the story you want to tell. So um, you know, put it in some kind of logic in here. So for example, you can think of the next year, next year, next year, whatever. So hi, uh, Charles JS probably um, the the simplest that I've that I've done. So D three, I don't know if anyone heard of D three, but D three is like the most popular thing in the world uh, in terms of data visualization. Um, but in, for, for my experience, to use it is not that easy because everything is so separated. So depending on the charts, uh, when I mean separated, because when you use high charts, you can just put in the same format and then they just display different charts. But D3, you have to like understand one of them and then um, to fit in the different data. So, but they are really, really beautiful. Uh, so as you can see, there are like a lot of, um, a lot of weird charts, a lot of different charts that can tell different stories. Um, hit tree map, which I mentioned a little bit earlier. It's very easy to tell um, the, the relationship between how you can click on it. But, okay. The one that I created probably, well, 
doing. Yeah. So, but D three is is something that you can explore if you just want to do one off, uh, show off thing, show off thing that you can uh, to your to your clients, right? Uh, next one, the leaflet. Uh, uh, one. I have done too little to tell you my experience with M charts, but it's free as well. The leaflet uh, is. Uh, basic for mapping. With high charts, you can do some basic maps as well, but Leaflet is, is uh, one of the easiest things and it's free. So, um, so, for example, do you have any examples that I can find? I don't think I can find, but let's do that. But, uh, this thing basically use my, my preview, basically use uh, Leaflet to build this charts, right? Um, building maps, I'm going to spend like 50, uh, one minute to talk about it. Uh, building mapping data is a bit hard when you don't have the geographical information. So, when I mean geographical information is that when you don't have this square bound to your particular layer of map, because you know, when you, you have country level, you have, you have a state level, you have postcode level, you have something like that. So, if your country doesn't provide that, so it's a bit harder for you to uh, visualize it. So um, we, we use our software uh, internally to generate those things uh, for us when, when I was working with them. So that, that, could, that, that could be a mess. Um, but uh, once you get that, it's going to show you beautiful things that uh, really cool information. I think that should be it. Um, so I would recommend people to read more uh, Bio, uh, which is basically just a Google official Google guidelines. I use a lot of uh, examples over here, um, and then I like mentioned uh, data based catalog, uh, official patients, official patients. Um, if you have anything, just ask. If I don't like, I really want to make it clear I'm not a guest on this uh, software engineers. Now. I, I think most people already know me <laughs> by now. Uh, but if you have any questions, I'll be uh, very happy to open up a uh, panel, which is you have a real data science on stage. <laughs> um, yeah, but you can have better data, just go ahead. Any questions regarding data visualization? <laughs> yeah. Hey, how's it going? Um, I think I think my the, the key takeaway over here is I'm just trying to explain uh, my relationship working with them. Um, so so what was your question again? The, the last part. Uh, to give you an example, I have to a formal degree in mathematics, and I have to do a formal degree in mathematics. Oh yeah, okay. Then I said this. You can probably talk with Ken, <laughs> but I'll I'll, I'll share, share you what I use the most when I um then yeah this one um. This thing basically de defines what data science is. So data science is a very broad term, right? So some people just do machine learning. Um, some people do uh, just maths, which is like the, the um, stats guy, I would say, or quants, uh, quantitative, right? Um, and then you have a substantial expertise, which is kind of like a business, business guy. So uh, I would say data science is very um, rare nowadays, um, but I would say, so you actually have to know what kind of, um, the business are you trying to, uh, at the end of the day, what, what is your angle? And then you need to know maths, you need to know um, programming skills. So, programming skills means that because they, they need to write scripts to clean up data. But it's very different programming skills compared to software engineers. Software engineers build apps, build systems, uh, link different components to each other. But uh, maths uh, or, or data science guys, they are just there to, uh, they, they know the end result, so they want to figure out how to get to the end result. So, I was a, a, a very good skill set. So data science uh, is a broad term, like I said. Um, how I define it, um, people that I work with generally are from math background, uh, data science, uh, but the data science that I work with don't really have a lot of uh, programming background. So, uh, but they, they still know what I mean, obviously. Um, so that is how generally people define data science. Um, I would, I mean, but things change all the time. So um, just, just use this as a brain of thought. <laughs> 
Oh, I cannot understand this concept. That's, that's. Okay, regarding your question, right, later I will share a little bit more about data science. Yeah, so for those who are interested to know uh, a little bit about data science, machine learning, AI in general, you all can stay back after this session. After, after, after this Q&A session. Yeah, so my question is, do you usually deal with aggregated data or raw data? I don't deal with raw data. Uh, I really, uh, for when you make raw data uh, from a data science um, background, say they get the raw data, we capture raw data uh, from, from our software applications. We capture raw data, but when, they, when you want to display information, we already have some sort of uh, filter data that, that, that really clean up, remove the noise. So um, when we try to visualize the data, it's all about um, knowing the trends, knowing the outliers, knowing the um, the patterns that that is that users can get immediately. So when 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 we deal with data science, right? So it's like I just want to display this information. I just want to show that the 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 casualty rate is very high this year. Do me a favor. So show. Sure. Um, so then we we, 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 look, we look at what what type of charts we can get and then we display it. But back to the different project type. Um, so when we talk about um, project type one, that like that, like define it. Um, which is building a DIY tool. Yeah, so that DIY, DIY tool will deal with a lot of raw, uh, raw data. I'm a, I'm a full stack engineer as well, so I do a lot, a lot of back end. Um, not a lot, like 30%. But so um, basically, we need to use, we need to transform raw data into a um, understandable data. Um, and then, so that we can use the data to do, we can use the data to make visualizations. Um, so one thing that we used to say a lot is cross tabulation. Um, so basically having two different data that can produce a, a meaningful story, I say. Yeah, so I don't really do more data. Yeah. Any questions about who don't want to be uh, anyone here doesn't want to be a data scientist and want to be a software engineer? Come to my world. <laughs> okay, sorry. Do you want to speak more about your experience in Tableau? Yeah, before that, 
我昨天去去挖我一块新的岩石。Yeah. 你知道出来没宣传这些 app 的开头的 data， 来，你这是 consensus， consensus， streaming data， 你在 Tinder 上面认识， OK， it's not big， but who is continuous？ Okay， I my concern is really is because it's go to the web browser， as opposed to cash flow to the browser。Yeah。So what's your suggestion? Cool. Um, same. Uh, not same. Sorry. <laughs> um, well, um, you can use different charting libraries. I'm just going to show you high charts, but um, it's the same for chart JS or whatever. So if you use charting libraries, right, it's basically um, a way for you to represent the uh, what the hell is this? Um, high charts logo. I didn't have high charts logo. Um, yeah, just do demos. So if you, let's say that you have a stream of data you want to count in real time. So um, when I talk about real time, I'm, I'm talking about one to two seconds delay or even lesser, right? Um, so you can actually feed in uh, information. You can update the data when you have the data. I think they have an example over here. Um, real, no. They don't have a real time data. Dynamic. Yeah. So this is uh, a really good example. It's, it's, it's basically programming. So every second you have a new data coming in, um, you just update the chart, update the chart, update the chart. So how do you fetch the data? Um, that's software engineer's job to figure out um, how do you uh, get the data. Do you, do you want to get it every second or you use some different web software thing to get um, data when, when it's only updated? So yeah, so uh, most libraries, I would say most libraries may handle that for you. So um, just get one uh, code master to program for you. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you'll be fine. Can I have one? Oh, yeah, sure. Of course, the previous that didn't hear clearly on what I was saying. <laughs> uh, my first question is, can you uh, please talk about something about uh, the uh, teamwork and uh, the development process of uh, data visualization and data processing tools? I ask this question because uh, traditionally uh, uh, the tools and the way of uh, doing things of uh, statistics where uh, data science is based is usually considered as an individual and one batch. But uh, uh, what you present and also what we usually consider is uh, it's a very complex process. Like what kind of tool you, you present to your customer and uh, what uh, kind of uh, final product. And, uh, it's, uh, uh, even if you do some uh, graphic design, if I understand right. So, usually one or two data scientists cannot uh, uh, draw the whole picture. So it must be a team. And how uh, this problem is solved in your know, uh, real working process? Yeah. Well, you, you, you're talking about the size of the team uh, that concerns that, and, and, and also different skill sets from the data scientist, right? But I not not the right. data science, but also the uh, collaboration procedure. Well, like, yeah. Just like software development. Because, for example, we have many uh, nodes, paradigms of uh, software development. How is the similar counterparts exist in data science or not? Okay, I can only speak from my experience. Um, so, my experience working with data science is like, uh, yeah, like two ways that I mentioned. One is basically um, we have a software, um, we want data science to help us better. Another one project which is probably similar to yours, so you really have crazy amount of data. Um, you want to represent, you want to present it to uh, a certain client, or you want to do reports. Right? Because that's the point. That's where you make money. Those. So um, data scientists, the, the relationship is um, they will tell us the story that they want to present. So um, like I said, uh, like the same examples that we given, they want to they want to show you that. I'll just give another example. Um, they want to show that. The financial aid has spiked over recent years. How do I want to visualize that? So they come to us, the software engineers team. So internally, uh, in, in, in my team, we didn't really have graphic design. Um, we have we outsourced somebody to look into the whole thing. Um, but it's the front end engineer's job to understand the story that you want to tell. So at the end of the day, data visualization is all about storytelling. Um, what data you want to um, uh, you want you want users to know. So it's, it's so, so storytelling is very simple and, and maybe people can navigate the data. So um, I would say relationship is almost like one way. 
So um, data scientists go to a software engineer or even a software development house like, like, like myself. So just say that I want to tell the story, help me do it. So um, if I understand right, what you describe is like a data scientist is like an individual problem. One or two people is enough, right? Uh, depending on the project, but in my working experience, yes, they are quite uh, isolated. We only have two data scientists. Um, some some guys that come part time, but some some Harvard guy um, they just come in once a year or something. Uh, but it's very independent. But but that was my experience two years ago. So um, I know things are changing. Uh, depend depending on the project uh, project time. I've known uh, one of my clients that that I work with. Their entire program, their entire team is data science team because they are doing the uh, they're doing the uh, the property listing thing. So their daily job is just to clean data. Um, how do you how do you I don't know what to do to be honest with you. Um, I, I know it very briefly. I, I don't I don't want to speak too much if I don't know. But they, they do have a team of data scientists. Yeah. So 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 for us we basically just visualize data for them. Um, we build a dashboard with simple different components for them to, to, to build the software. But they do have a team. Uh, I would say eight people, I think eight or nine people. They are scientists. Depending on that. My, my second question is, uh, uh, I have a feeling that uh, all these graphs and charts are two-dimensional and actually uh, three-dimensional or probably four-dimensional if it exists and already in use and uh, it sometimes is also kind of important real visualization. How do you think of this? Because this is very related to the technique. Like now the uh, 3D projection it's still in the very early development age. Let's say if you imagine that you have some graphs in the three dimensions. So I, I don't know how it is better or not. Yeah, so, so it depends on the story that you want to tell. So let's just say your data has another axis called depth, which is um, which is quite common, I would say, let's say. Um, so you might need to find a different uh, charting libraries. Personally, I have never done uh, 3D charts, so um, but I, I know people who do, um, but they don't have any libraries, uh, unfortunately, open for public to use. So you will have to find a very niche developer uh, to do so. But let us see what pie charts have. Um, give me a perhaps. Um, Uh, whoa, it's crazy. You don't mean this 3D, right? This 3D is just stupid. <laughs> um, I, the, no, I don't think I don't think they do. So um, I I can't answer that. But well, hopefully you find someone, uh, or you find me, I'll find someone for you. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it, I understand, but, but, but if you talk about projections, right, it's more so like to uh, tools of graphics, uh, I would say, if you talk about projection, do you mean like project to a 3D space? Yeah. Okay, um, so that is more so like graphical thing. That, that is not less than, uh, I mean, it's still data visualization, but it's just different skill sets. Um, what I think you will need a, um, like a, what's that called, a Unity guy, like, like the does this specifically. Um, Right? This guy can answer your question well. I do that, or you can use um, the Firefox VR plugin. You can look up for Firefox VR plugin. Maybe you can use their library to plot your graph in 3D. Yeah, Firefox and VR. So it supports on your browser. Yeah, web VR, web VR is quite, um, it's getting a lot of traction these days. Facebook has been pushing it uh, quite a while as well. Yeah. So over here we have a community. We have a good community. Um, that's why we're here. We have to try to help each other. Any other questions? Um, yeah. Hi. Hey, yes, sir. I hope this is relevant. Um, I like the fact that you have put together this little uh, presentation stuff. Thank you. Okay. I come from a different background. I mean, IT, but we've always had uh, documentation. Sure. 
to describe processes. Mm -hmm. We have documentation to, to understand the flow. Now, what exists between software developers and data scientists? I mean, we can't always be sitting around a table and discussing stuff. So, what's available today for a software developer to understand what the data scientist is trying to say? Is there a process flow diagram that's been uh, designed as you interact? Uh, is there a set of documentation that you adhere to? A set of standards? Um, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think there is a standard uh, way of dealing with data scientists. If there is, um, may not sign me up, um, but basically that's a project manager role to, um, to figure out um, at the end of the day. So, you know, uh, very, very similar to what we mentioned, I, I don't think you're that different at all. At, um, at the end of the day, we use software, different components. So um, we use uh, a lot of user stories to just describe um, things that you want to get at, at, at the end of the day. Um, user stories, well, basically say that, hey, what, um, what's that called? Even, when, then, even something, when something, then something. Um, so, yeah, obviously software needs to do a lot of documentation, but, but you're talking about the relationship between um, the project managers and, and data scientists. Um, personally, I've, I've never, I've, I don't know any standard ways to, to do so. Um, sorry, but let's think up. If you find something, tell me now. That, that'll help my job a lot better as well. Um, but again, uh, it's basically just uh, a lot of um, information capturing, um, listening, um, talk to them. Uh, at the end of the day, write everything, write everything down black and white in a very standard uh, project proposal. Um, and then just have them sign off and then deliver results and then always do it uh, sprints by sprints uh, every once, every one, every two weeks uh, give them the results that they see depending on the size of the project obviously yeah. Any students? I mean, I'm just, I just want to say that uh, it's amazing that, that if students are here and then just in front of them stuff outside of study. Um, One question, maybe sure. you back to the data we got Awesome. How about export? Export of what you see? Can we just export to the PDF? Yeah. Do you have any recommendations for the free library? Yeah. Um, so let us say, let us say about, um, so depending on your libraries that you can use, right? SVG and Canvas. Uh, basically, well, SVG is very programmer friendly, I would say. Uh, Canvas is a bit harder to use. I think you can read more about it. But depending on your on the um, the libraries that you use, so so high charge obviously you can, but you're talking about free. So um, I'll just show a quick high charge thing. Um, click here, download PNG, download PNG, okay, okay cool. Um, so, so if you're talking about charges, which is a, uh, which is a, uh, as, which is a canvas. No, 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 it's, it's, it's very, it's very common. Um, because when you generate, generate a dashboard, you want it to, you want it to export it to PDF, SVG, uh, PNG, so you can share it, right? Um, if you want to download, if you want to print it, so the only way is is um, is to make it as an image, right? So chart JS export. So because Canvas by default is already can, uh, chart, Canvas by default is already an image. So let me try to see if the demos already have, but it's almost like a built-in features that they already have. Um, so you can just like save images. So, um, but you can ask your programmer to do that step for you. Um, so just say if I saw this, what I mean is uh, I report put this thing in the page. For example, like this thing you show for your business. Yeah. Now we can check, right? Is can I just have a button click and it's a whole yeah. thing that I saw? Yeah, so so the, the, the report that we built basically like what you just said, because this that's, that's what you need. So we have a dashboard. So we want to say uh, export it, not export, um, call it share. We, we share it uh, as an interactive record. So basically, you have the same thing. So the, that, that URL will, will just call the, uh, the 
trying by this this way like it's exactly the same thing. So it's almost like it's almost like somebody uh, programming specifically for that page. So it, it's a similar concept. So you still use a trying library to show it. Um, software server developers, yeah, they 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 know. But it's the same it's the same concept because when you build a dashboard, you use the uh, libraries to build a dashboard, right? So if you want to export it out, so it's basically like a page and use the libraries to build a chart. Yeah. Uh, very good question. So, uh, interactive reports, that, 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 that's what we call it. Uh, we export it out. I don't know if there's any people charts people over here. Um, they can. No? No chart today? Awesome. Yeah, so, so the point that I was saying, um, just really appreciate uh, students coming out. Um, back in my days when I was studying, I didn't give anything uh, to set up. <laughs> I didn't give stuff to um, the learning outside of study. So I just really appreciate it. If there, are, if there are any students, you know, keep digging, uh, worlds getting smaller, uh, basically means that communication lines are so much stronger, you can reach out and get information. Yeah? Cool. Alright, thank you guys. My back to Ken. Alright, uh, so I will do a very short sharing on data science since I think uh, some of you might have uh, are new to this. So, a show of hands, how many of you are new to data science? Okay, yeah, I think this sharing might be a suitable one. <laughs> Oh yeah, can I know what's the purpose of understanding about data science or probably data visualization? Anyone from business background, SMEs who wants to implement this in their business? Or some are from MNCs, companies who wants to do it for their work? Or just general knowledge? General knowledge? Okay, general knowledge. How many wants to implement it in their work or their business? Work and, okay, work and business, right? Okay. Alright, just a brief introduction of myself. I'm Kent. So I'm a software engineer in Intel currently, and I'm also studying data science. Uh, I'm currently taking a master in data science and analytics in USM. So as my part-time project, I do work on some data science projects. Yeah. Okay, so a very let me keep this short. A very brief introduction to data science. Uh, it's very simple. So, data science is about learning about data. So, some common uh, definitions that I want to clarify over here because sometimes people might get confused by some of these terms, like especially when you read tech news, you read AI, and sometimes you read machine learning, and sometimes, oh, there's this new thing called deep learning. So, what are the three main differences? Very simple, AI is a very general term, okay? In a very general term, meaning that computers will eventually have the intelligence of a human being, okay? And machine learning is just one part of AI. So AI can have different, different branches. So machine learning will be one of it. Machine learning, what does it mean is, basically, it's mostly an algorithm that tries to learn from the data that you feed in. That's machine learning. So AI is a very general broad term. You can say that the autonomous driving is using is using AI because it has different different things. It does not just use machine learning. It might use computer vision to interpret the surrounding to help it make its 
vision. And something that is of a buzzword recently would be deep learning. So deep learning is something that is mostly used when you have a very complex data set, like an image. Okay. So or you have like 10 case or 10,000 plus data, then you might want to use deep learning. Okay, so deep learning is basically a big subset of machine learning. Okay. Okay, so what is data science? What is data science? So this is almost similar Venn diagram that is being shared just now. Uh, so in short, data science is a combination of three main things. First is computer science which is the role of a software engineer. Next, mathematics and also statistics, which is a bit of the data visualization side. And also you need to understand what kind of, uh, what does the data tells you, what's the mean, what's the max, uh, what's the uh, median of the data. And lastly, the most important part is actually the domain knowledge or the so-called business knowledge. So just now, uh, Jen Hong did say, something about the property. So let's say in the property uh, domain, right? you have all this data. So which kind of data is important? This is probably something that data scientists does not know. What they know is they know how to, they might know how to plot the chart, they might know how to train the algorithms, but which data is important? This one might be, be dependent onto the real estate expert or probably the real estate agent. So let's say if you want to talk about stock prices, some people might want to implement machine learning or deep learning into stock price prediction. So a data scientist might not be very good in terms of which indicator they want to use when they want to predict their stock price. So this one they might need to find a finance manager who is who has years of experiences in choosing uh, the right indicator in order to predict the price. So that's the role of a domain knowledge. So computer science basically is uh, mainly the software engineers. Uh, software engineers, what they do is they will help you to probably automate your data collection. So let's say you want to collect data from uh, 10 websites. So a software engineer might be there to help you to collect all this data. And then uh, they can help you save it into a certain form that you want. So that's the role of uh, computer science. And Max and statistics is like, that's the role of a data scientist. So you need to be very good in maths and science. Uh, but of course, in order to get into data science, that does not mean that all oh, you need to be a pro in maths and science. Uh, because the good news now is that a lot of uh, data science or machine learning algorithms are being provided to you. Uh, as in, there are a lot of APIs, there are a lot of libraries that you can just call and they will do all the dirty work for you. Okay. So some basic data science use cases, uh, Facebook, social analytics, uh, very simple, like they want to know what's your user behavior, they want to know uh, what time you come online, uh, they want to know when are the times, uh, which friends do you like to talk to the most, so they, they will probably feed you with more of their news, right? So you might realize also sometimes you go onto Lazada, right? Then you, uh, you search for certain products, then sometimes they will suggest you, they will suggest you similar items. So this is also some of the use cases of machine learning. Uh, next is uh, Amazon, like what I said, uh, Lazada. So it's to improve, basically they want to upsell you, uh, they want to upsell you. Okay, and also it's a good thing for the consumers, as in they will help you to, they will let you know what kind of things you might be interested in. So it sort of improves your customer's uh, user experience. Then the third is uh, Google, as in optimizing rights. What I heard of is sometimes they will, after they have all this data about where do the passenger get picked up, so they will know that okay, this is a very common area for drive uh, for passengers to look for riders uh, to look for drivers. Okay, so so they will locate more uh, drivers over that area. So this is how they optimize it. So that's why you might realize that it is sometimes easier to get uh, drivers because Uber or Grab has already done a lot of uh, data science works behind. Uh, Bank of America increasing customer experience uh, is also used in finance. 
Airbnb improving searches. I think just like Google, basically uh, become smarter and smarter as you search because they might know. Let's say you have one word about uh, you look for camera recently. Then the next time when you look for another term, they will know you might be looking for camera model again. So this is how the searches becomes improved. And lastly, is music recommendations. Let's say you like uh, uh, rock music, so they usually will suggest you more of uh, rock music. Okay. Then a uh, reality check for machine learning project. Basically, a lot of time I actually spend on data cleaning and also data collection. So that's what the data scientists do. Uh, so how how we put it? So a lot of things is not like oh data science, data scientists super cool, you know, like you are working on those cutting edge algorithm, deep learning algorithm, right? Come up with all these super cool uh, insights. Not really. So most of the time I actually spend on on, on cleaning. Okay, as in how? As in you, we have a huge data set. Okay. But some of the data might be might have missing values. Probably not some a lot of missing values here and there. So what are you going to do about it? So that's the role of data science. Some might be removing the data, some might be finding the averages of all the data and replacing it. So these are what a data scientists will do uh, in day to day job. Uh. And also data collection, that's very important. So how are you going to collect the data? Let's say you talk about stock price prediction. Where are you going to collect this data? So you might need help, right? You might need some automation script to scrap from certain websites, okay, or, or to get it from certain database that's being provided. Then how are you going to collect the data for the indicators? So let's say I want to, the indicator of volume on the uh, last close price. How are you going to get that? So these are the things that we need to figure out as well. So it's, not as simple as like, oh we have ready the data then we just run the algorithms and oh voila we got the results not really okay so for those who are interested in pursuing the data science path uh, prerequisites Python Python SQL pretty basic stuff uh, as in basics into the data science then next you will move on into data science with Python. Uh, so the four things that you saw there is actually the libraries. So this is the good news that I said just now. Basically, these libraries already help you do a lot of the deep works. As in, you don't need to write the formula or the algorithms in order to train your data. Okay, so the algorithms are actually being provided in there. So let's say you want something like very simple uh, machine learning model like KNN and K nearest neighbor. You can just call it from the scikit learn. So they will do all the job. You just call K and N model, and that that's your model. <laughs> that, so then you load in your data. But of course, the, the trick is the trick is it's not also simple like what I described. This allows you to get into data science quickly. But of course, what differentiates between good and great data scientists are like how are you going to know which kind of model to use? What model are you going to use for this kind of data? What kind of parameters are you going to use for this uh, to, to, to improve the accuracy of your model? There are a lot of parameters that you can use, let's say for one model. Parameters in a simple term means uh, characteristics. Uh. So this model has different different that different things that you can tweak. What kind of values do you want to tweak? So this is uh, uh, what a great data scientist should know. Then slightly Higher level is uh, machine learning, uh, applied machine learning, and also advanced ones. Uh, say you use scikit learn, and next one is Keras. Keras is like more towards the deep learning stuff. So let's say you are already familiar with machine learning, you want to get into deep learning, you want to uh, work on the image data sets, uh, then you might explore into Keras. Keras is something that is built on top of Google TensorFlow. So have you here heard of TensorFlow? Like I think sometimes we read news articles and we read this word Google TensorFlow. Then at the same time, like let's say you you would want to explore the more, which is into big data. Big data in this case we will have something called Hadoop. Okay, this might not be as uh, 
frequently heard of. So most people might heard of SQL, but not so much of Hadoop. Okay, and next one is Spark. But we won't go, go, go deep into this. So uh, it all starts with a very simple, simple uh, cycle. We have six main steps. First one is a uh, business understanding, which is the most important part, which is you want to know what kind of problem you are solving. So if you don't know what kind of problem you are solving, basically this project is like not really useful. It's just like in a company, you want to you say, oh, I want to use machine learning. So your boss will ask you usually, uh, what's the ROI, right? What's the ROI for this project? So you need to first come up with what kind of problem you have solved. How critical is this problem that you want to use machine learning to solve? And what kind of improvement can I see after you implement the project? Okay, so business understanding. Next is data understanding, which is uh, you might have collected the data. You want to understand what kind of data you want to connect. Let's say uh, for the let's say property property price. Okay, your business understanding is okay. I want to predict what's the next year's property price. So you need to understand what kind of data you need to connect. Like okay, uh, I want to collect the current property price. That's for sure. I want to collect the location of the property. Okay, I want to collect the number of rooms of the property and so on and so forth. So you need to understand what kind of data. So this is where the domain expert comes into place. You need that. Then data preparation is whereby you might go out and collect the data. Once you really understand what kind of things you need, you need to go out and collect. Go out as in, not say you go out here. You can be go online to find questionnaires, surveys, online forms, or web scrapping. Okay, so once you have collected this data, and this is the part where you spend most of the time, two and three, two and three is the part where you spend a lot of time. Four is the modeling, which is you run, you build your model, which is uh, basically machine learning. You build your model, you train your model based on the data that you have. Then the fifth one is evaluation, as in, okay, you have already built this model. You say that this model can predict next year's price. But how are you going to know that this model is good? You need to test it, right? You need to test the model. So this is where you evaluate it. Using what? Like how do you test it? Probably what you can do is sometimes you have the data set, you have 1000 data set. So you use 700 data to train the model. So you train it, you train it, that learns already. So what you do is how do you evaluate? You use the remaining 300 data to test it. So this 300 data, you also have a very clear answer already. You already have your, your, your clear answer over there. So what you can do is you, you judge based on what your machine learning model has predicted. Then you, you can basically see, okay, seems like this model is predicting pretty accurately following all the values that you have. Okay, and lastly is to deploy. So you want to, if I want to deploy it to your real world, to your company, uh, let's say prediction of the stock price you want to deploy it so that it will continuously get the latest data and then train it and then predict what's the tomorrow's price. Alright, so this is a very detailed uh, explanation. So basics is uh, pretty simple. There are some common terms that we use over here. Uh, one is called the what is called the feature. So feature are basically the data, the data features that you need. So just now I mentioned property price, right? Property price will be something that you want to predict. So property price will be called a class. A class which is on the second column, label. Okay, this is the, the thing that you want to predict, the outcome, the end goal that you want to predict. So the feature in this case would be like property location, property number of rooms, okay, and things like this. Then records in this case would be the number of data that you have. So number like you have connected 10 data, so that's 10 records in this case. Alright. Okay, next is machine learning. So what's the difference between 
machine learning and sometimes people might ask, okay, what's the difference between machine learning and conventional programming? So it seems like we also do code, right? So what's the difference? So in conventional programming, what you do is if else cases, you set very strict rules like if the value is more than five, if the location is at Subang Jaya, the price will be like this times ten. It's a very hard coded, right? So imagine if you have a lot of data, you can't do that. Right? How are you going to be very clear with your rules? So this is like machine learning does its job. So what you do is you dump the data into the algorithm, it will learn by itself. So in short, what does machine learning do is to map A to B. A is actually the features, the, uh, your property location, property group, uh, number of rooms, to B, which is your property prices. So if, what this algorithm does is it will try to map these few features to your angle. That's how it learns. Okay. Alright, so three types of machine learning algorithm usually we work on supervised learning. Okay, supervised learning is like you have a teacher to teach, to tell your algorithm that this is correct, this is wrong, this is correct, this is wrong. So that you will learn by itself with a guidance. That's why the word supervised. Supervised learning means that someone to teach it. Which in this case, what does that mean is you have a correct data already, which is like, let's say you already have your property price. In this case, you already have your property prices being listed clearly with the location and also the number of rooms. So you have this property price being labeled. So this is a supervised learning. Okay, unsupervised is whereby you remove away the property price and you let the algorithm to do its own what we call grouping or clustering. Okay, but this is not so commonly used. Mostly we will use uh, supervised learning in, in our case, in most of the data science projects. And we personal learning is uh, a bit more advanced, which is mainly used in games, something like the uh, what is it called? DeepMind, Google DeepMind that beats the champion in the goal game, so they will use reinforcement. But this is even more technical, yeah, so we very seldom use reinforcement learning. Alright, so supervised learning, you all can see the main differences. So supervised learning is like the duck, you already label that this is a duck and not the duck. Then you put it into your algorithm, okay, then you train it. So next time, at the, for the duck, right, you will, this is an unknown data. So this is unknown data, you put it into your predictive model. So your model will tell you, okay, this is a duck, right? Meanwhile, for unsupervised, you have no labels at all. So you don't tell the model that this is duck, this is not duck. The model learns by itself. But of course, what it learns is it cannot tell you that it is a duck or not a duck. Ah, no, I mean like it cannot tell you the clear answer. What it does is it will just group them. So it just group these things, uh, these animals based on their characteristics. It does grouping or what we call clustering. Alright, so that's the main difference between these two. And lastly, lastly is a more detailed picture of the three domains of uh, machine learning. Okay, uh, supervised, unsupervised, reinforcement learning. So supervised, we still have a further branches is a classification and also regression. So just now when I talk about property price prediction, is actually a regression, which is basically value prediction, value, so it's something like value. Classification, in a very simple term, is to classify whether it is a duck or it is not duck. Okay, so that's uh, classification. And supervised learning, um, like just now we talked about clustering, so it is to group these few things into different groups. Then reinforcement learning, like I said, one of it is like game, game AI in this case, right? So I think that's all. Uh, so if you want to work on machine learning projects, uh, 
let's say you use Python, you will, Anapana will be a very useful uh, distribution that you can download. Then usually we will start off with Jupyter's notebook. Uh, so that's a very good entry point for beginners. Uh, Jupyter's notebook basically helps you uh, to break down all your machine learning codes into segments and you can play around with it and you can just run one segment of your code to see what happens up. So yeah, this good. And lastly is the useful Python libraries, uh, NumPy or NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, and Scikit-learn. This four. The last one is the most important one uh, because it basically gives you all the APIs to your model, to your machine learning model. So like I said just now, you don't need to write your own algorithm when you first started up. Okay? But of course, when you are very advanced, maybe you might want to write your own model. So if you want to just start up, so you can just use the scikit-learn library, just call whatever models that you want. Okay? So the third one is uh, Matplotlib Seaborn is for data visualization. So this is like very beginner level to data visualization. So just now what uh, Jen Tong has shared is like slightly more interactive, slightly uh, way more beautiful charts and graphs that we can use. So that probably can see one is like pretty dull charts, but it works out. Okay, to the second one, pandas. Uh, pandas is usually the first few libraries that you use. It's basically to load your Excel data set into your uh, into the Jupyter notebook. So you have your Excel data set. Okay, so how are you going to process and work on this data, this Excel file? So you need something like pandas, load it inside, then you will basically set it as a as a table. Just imagine it as a table. So you can work from it. Okay, and the first one, numpy, numpy, uh, basically it is a foundation for pandas, and you can do a lot of uh, multi-dimensional arrays. But we won't go so deep into numpy side. Okay. Alright, so that's all for my sharing for data science. Thank you. Alright, any questions? No questions? Any questions? Okay, I hope you all have learned something in this session and also uh, Jen Tong's session. Okay, so I will see you all in probably hopefully the next session. We will be sending the uh, event on Facebook. So do check out our Facebook page. Thank you so much.